It's time for another LA Kings fan feedback show. We hear what you have to say about the Kings roster shakeup this week on this edition of Locked on LA Kings. You are Locked on Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked On LA Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We'd love for you to leave us a positive comment on Apple Podcasts if you're a fan of the show. And of course, we're on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. I'm Eddie Garcia, your host of Locked On LA Kings. I've worked at sports media for the past 30 years, 20 plus years at the Fox Sports Radio Network. I'm also co-host of the puck podcast it's a weekly nhl review show that's been putting out content for the past 16 years and a passionate la kings fan for 30 years this episode of locked on la kings is brought to you by ebay motors a championship team is about each player being the perfect fit same with your vehicle so for parts that fit head to ebay motors and look for the green check mark stay in the game with ebay's guaranteed fit ebaymotors.com let's ride ebay's guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers eligible items only exclusions apply it is time for another king's fan feedback show and we've got a lot of comments to get right into about what's happened the past week with the los angeles kings as usual we will start with your emails and our first email comes from scott in simi valley he says i'm still not sure how to rate the pierre luc dubois acquisition mainly because i've not seen him play much but was just looking at the mayor's manor article about the king's salary cap situation which says that Rob Blake currently has only about 250 grand to work with, and it's clear depth in experienced players is no longer an LA Kings strength, plus moves still need to be made to acquire a goaltender, or should I say goaltenders? Like you, I also like Blake's willingness to make big moves, but unless some of the young kids take big steps this season, the roster looks thin. Blake basically moved four experienced NHL players to afford to sign Dubois as the Jersey pick was also traded away for Dubois I know that uh, what that was Winnipeg's price but can't help but feel Blake dealt one too many pieces I don't like losing Gabe Velarde either and feel like this may be the one Kings fans will regret looking at the current Kings salaries there are a couple that seem too high to me including Dowdy and more but I would not trade our trade Arvidsson at 4.25 million when you have more signed for only five hundred thousand dollars less I like Drew and Moore, by the way. I'm just looking at the numbers in return. In my opinion, Arvidsson brings an element of no-quit, playmaking, grit, and speed that you don't find in many players, and I'm not moving him at this time. So that leaves Blake in a pretty hot seat right now. Being an NHL GM can do that, and only time will tell how the Dubois trade works out. In closing, we can look at the Oilers of several years ago as an example of what happens to an NHL team, which tries to build a cup winner around a few great players and an otherwise thin foundation. Uh, He continues, I'm not saying that uh, the Kings roster is like that, but if it loses more depth, it could be. I realize the cap situation changes every year, but this is how I see it right now anyway. Thanks for all the great content. I'm enjoying the yearly Kings draft reviews, which have helped me to reconsider my dissatisfaction with the Kings drafts under uh, during the Blake era era. Sometimes you need to see all the puzzle pieces at once to get a true picture, and that's what your draft analysis shows have provided. Uh, P.S., uh, the Mayor's Manor article also mentions the Kings are working on re-signing Zach McEwen. I really want to like Mac, but was not impressed with by his play. In my humble opinion, if the Kings are going to sign a forward as an enforcer, he needs to be able to play a solid two-way game and contribute more than what we've seen from McEwen. So a lot to chew on there uh, from... Scott, um, I, I will comment on the very last part of it. Um, I, I, like you, have seen that the Kings are working on re-signing Zach McEwen. Uh, I'm not a fan of that. Uh, I was not a fan of um, his game in the brief time we saw him play. Um, just, I don't think he contributes much, to be honest with you. So that re-signing is something that I will not be a fan of if, in fact, that does happen. Uh, our next email comes from Luke in Los Angeles. Uh, he says, what an offseason it's been so far. I have to commend Rob Blake for making big moves and making it clear the Kings are going for it. Shedding Cal's contract, re-signing Gavrikov, and sending out uh, one of the more 
expensive cap hits in Ayafalo and Walker have been great moves in my opinion. It, it hurts to see players like Velarde, Kupari, and Dursey go, but I think bringing in a player like Pierre-Luc Dubois will be worth it. He provides an insurance policy if Quentin Byfield doesn't pan out and should only add to the Kings scoring punch. I've heard fans say that $8.5 million is too much, but with the cap going up and PLD only being 25, I think the Kings are paying for what he will be, not for what he is right now. I got to say, too, it's nice hearing another Luke, or at least half of one, on the team again uh, with the newly released schedule pairing with the fact that the Kings still have more moves to make. I wish it was October already. As always, keep up the great work and go Kings go. Uh, yeah, I have no issue with the contract. Um, you know, as it goes along, it will not be uh, quite as expensive as it seems in the moment. Um, as was mentioned, you're getting a 25-year-old Pierre-Luc Dubois who is in his prime and will be in his prime throughout the eight years of this contract. So I have no issue with the terms of the contract. Uh, Austin Clark is in Apple Valley, California. He says, I'm a new listener who just started after this season and never really liked podcasts that much, but I love to listen to yours. Well, thank you. Uh, I haven't been a Kings fan as long as some, but I've been a fan since 2008 when the Kings drafted Dowdy. I loved your episode when you talked about the best first round picks. I would have been biased and I would have put Dowdy first because he's my favorite King since the beginning. But I wanted to ask, who is the goaltender the Kings should go after now and why? I think the Kings should go after another backup goalie and roll with Copley and see if Eric Portolo becomes something. But I do believe Phoenix is a good tender and can get the job done. Thank you and go Kings go. Uh, well, Austin, I'm, I'm glad you're a new listener. I'm glad you uh, are giving podcasts a chance and that you like what you're hearing. Uh, personally, I don't know um, how much I really do believe in Phoenix Copley. I know that he had a very good season last year, an unexpected season. I know what he meant to the Kings, and he did a great job in helping to turn their season around. Um, but I just... I look at him and I say, was there ever a game last year where you could say, we won that game because of Phoenix Copley? And I can't think of a single game where you could honestly say that. Now, we won games with Phoenix Copley. He was certainly a part of wins, but I don't think there was a single game where I thought he was the reason why we won. Um, not to say that every night a goalie has to do it all on his own. I'm just saying I don't know that he's the best option. Now, maybe it turns out that with the salary cap situation that they feel like they have to turn to him. And if that's the worst case scenario, then I can live with it. But I I just think we need to go out and find another goaltender who has uh, some, who's been around, certainly a, a, maybe a, a veteran goalie that can be another option in case Phoenix Copley, uh, you know, isn't an option. Uh, this from Sundeep Puni in Inglewood. He says, Eddie, I listen to your podcast every day. Well, Sundeep, that makes you an everydayer. Uh, he says, do you think with the trade for Pierre-Luc Dubois, the Kings make a deep run in the playoffs? Well, it's hard to say that just with that addition, without knowing what's going to happen in net, uh, that we can just say that his addition means the Kings will have a deep playoff run. But I think the Kings certainly have um, a belief that a strong presence down the middle is something that they needed, even though some Kings fans didn't feel like that was a priority. Clearly the organization did and obviously made a very aggressive move to get uh, those top three center spots very secure and strong for the playoffs. So I don't know that just his addition will be the missing ingredient to get the Kings into a deep playoff run. We've got to see what they do in net as well. But uh, again, certainly the Kings believe, and they paid a pretty high price, that that, is, uh, that was a priority for the Kings this offseason. Uh, Amy in Thousand Oaks says, or actually she's a Thousand Oaks native, but now representing Reno, Nevada. And she says, Kings fan forever. Uh, I look forward to your podcast every single day, definitely an everydayer. Thank you very much for that, Amy. Says, I've been a Kings fan since the early 70s when my dad started taking me to games at the Fabulous Forum when I was 10. Hockey's the best game and go Kings go. I love the Pierre-Luc Dubois trade. Hate to see Velarde, AI, and Kupari go, but I love that there's no more shuffling the top three centers. Artie will get more playing time. Vlad is a king, and I'm excited to see Brant Clark play. It's good to be a Kings fan. I was rooting against Florida in the Stanley Cup playoffs. I was in the Matthew Kachuk Haters Club, 
And I was really happy to hear on your podcast that I was not the only one. Well, there's plenty of people out there in the NHL that are Matthew Kachuk haters. Uh, For for me, if it was another team, not the Golden Knights, I probably would have been rooting against Matthew Kachuk as well. Uh, She continues, my question is about the cap in the playoffs and teams that exploit the loophole that allows a player to go on long-term injury reserve to avoid the cap, and then said player miraculously makes a comeback for the playoffs. I know Tampa got away with this, and Vegas did this year. I heard they were $10 million over the cap. I guess I feel better knowing they won by cheating a little, so in my mind, the win is tainted. Uh, what are your thoughts on this, and do you think the NHL will ever address this issue? Thank you for a great podcast that is both informative and entertaining. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um yeah, this started, the first time I remember this loophole being exploited was by uh, Patrick Kane and the Blackhawks. Then, as you mentioned, Tampa Bay did it with Nikita Kucherov. And, and this past year, Mark Stone and the Vegas Golden Knights exploited this loophole as well. Um, I don't think it's fair. I don't think the NHL should allow this. Uh, I think the salary cap should be in place throughout the postseason. Uh, I don't think you should basically be able to circumvent the cap by and look, I'm not suggesting that any of those players weren't actually hurt, um, but uh, they definitely took advantage of a situation. And the, the the thing is, though, I don't see any movement from the NHL or, frankly, uh, teams in the NHL to, you know, they're not uh, clamoring for this to be changed. Maybe it's because they want to take advantage of this situation if the opportunity arises as well. And again, it's not, you know, I, I know you were kind of tongue in cheek saying that they, you know, it was tainted because they cheated. Um, I, I, I can only assume that teams feel like this is something that they want to take advantage of if if it happens that they can take advantage of it. So I've, I've seen nothing, no talk, no chatter, no rumors about them changing this rule. So at least for the immediate future, it looks like that that rule is going to be around. And if the Kings get to take advantage of it, I don't think any of us will complain because obviously other teams have, have done that as well. Coming up, we've got more Kings fan feedback on this edition of Lockdown LA Kings, your team every day. This episode of Lockdown LA Kings is brought to you by Athletic Greens. With one delicious scoop of AG1, you are absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods probiotics and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy recovery, focus, and aging. AG1 contains less than one gram of sugar, costs you less than $3 a day, and it's just one scoop and a cup of water, and that's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easier, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. That's athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, let's get to the YouTube comments. And we start with some of the uh, feedback on the Sean Dursey trade. Uh, this comes from Dominic Ephraim 3088. He says, best of luck, Dursey moving on. Looking forward to seeing Spence regularly. Him and Bjornfoot spent an entire season together as the number one pair in Ontario, and it should transfer into a solid third pair in the NHL. Clark will be our seventh, but should find a good 40 or so games. Our seventh always gets used, used, and it takes the pressure off as a rookie. Spence has more experience and should get the first shot at the third pairing um yeah that's a possibility um if you've listened to the show for a while you know that i'm a big jordan spence fan but i'm super excited to see brant clark play as well um yeah i wouldn't be surprised if there was kind of a platoon situation on that right side d with clark or spence at least to start things off so uh, i wouldn't be opposed to that either to kind of maybe ease spence into the lineup a bit by uh, starting things off with jordan spence we'll see uh, our next uh, comment from YouTube comes from Robert Clyte, 88623. He says, uh, hey, hey, Eddie, by the Kings moving Jersey, I personally believe that it works out for both sides. Jersey get a chance to grow in Arizona and the Kings will have less of a headache on watching Jersey do the Jersey. Uh, we got this from Dario Valenzuela, 6400. He says, I feel that they shouldn't have traded Jersey. Only 24, 38 points, possible 50 to 60 points from a defenseman, 
Pierre-Luc Dubois is too expensive and really wants to go to Montreal. Speaking of Montreal, I would go after Suzuki to replace Kopitar when he retires. Uh, I don't see Sean Dursey ever scoring 60 points in a season. Um, maybe he could touch 50, perhaps. More playing time in Arizona, getting a greater role. But I would be surprised if he could hit 60. Um, and like like I said, I, I'm uh, it's not nothing against Sean Dursey, but you've got Brant Clark. You've got Jordan Spence. You've got people that can fill that role. Uh, Nick Suzuki is the young captain in Montreal. I don't think they're looking to to get rid of him anytime soon, so I'm not sure about that as a replacement for Andre Kopitar when he retires. We had a lot of comments, as you might expect, on the Pierre-Luc Dubois trade. Uh, matter of fact, the as far as the YouTube episode goes, we had over 3,200 views which was the third highest viewed episode on our YouTube channel since the channel launched. Uh, the only higher rated show or higher uh, numbers as far as viewers was the uh, show when the Kings acquired Kevin Fiala. Uh, 82 comments on the YouTube episode talking about the Pierre-Luc Dubois trade. So obviously, um, thank you for all those who uh, were in on that as far as viewing it and comment. Let's get to it. We had a lot of comments on this trade. And a lot of varying opinions, as you might imagine. Our first uh, comment on the YouTube episode comes from TR Burns 826 He says, the more I have thought about this trade, the more I like it. Depth down the middle is what you need to win a cup. While I like I follow, he was slotted for the fourth line at $4 million, And Kupari is basically a fourth liner at this point. That may develop into some, some, some offensive game. While we finally saw the breakthrough from Gabe, his production is still less than Dubois while only being a year younger. The trade also opens up more defined roles for Byfield and Kaliev in the top nine under the under contract year. Uh, while the biggest question mark is goaltending, I fully expect Rob Blake to fill that void with how active he has been the last two years, turning the team into a contender. Our next comment comes from Out of Control Cover Band 8639. Gutsy move by Blake to make the team more competitive in the postseason. PLD has more playoff games under his belt than AI, Velarde, and Kupari combined with twice as many playoff points. Was the price too high? Time will tell, but Blake is going for it. And I agree with you, Eddie, but I would rather a GM who's not afraid to make bold moves. Go Kings, go. Uh, this came from BH Becca. Uh, he says, it's a great trade for the Kings. They know Velarde better than anyone. He has a chronic back injury that has caused him to lose a tremendous amount of time. We did not advance against Edmonton two years in a row. Changes needed to be made. I'm not sure that eventually it's not Clark paired with Gavrikov and Roy on the third pairing with Spence. That would give the team tremendous balance. Yornfoot is the extra D-man. PLD has the ability to score 40-plus goals. Uh, he can skate circles around Velarde, much better skater and explosive. This type of large goal-scoring center with upside rarely becomes available. Both Kopitar and Arvidsson have their contracts expiring next year. Kopitar will be re-signed, but for less money. The cap will also expand. They can only play so many prospects. Where do all the complainers expect Bagamo, Turcott, and Kaliev to play? Dursey was shipped out because Clark has a bigger upside and Spence has the same skill level offensively, if not better. This franchise has a lot of players coming through the system and now will draft even more talented players this week. Relaxed Kings doubters, this team is already better than last year, but we do need a goalie. Not sure about Pierre-Luc Dubois scoring 40-plus goals. He has yet to score 30 in a season. Now, he's been close several times, but uh, that would be a pretty significant jump, so I'm not sure about him scoring 40-plus goals in a season. Uh, this comes from Earl Skackle. Uh, says, my concern is Dubois has now played himself out of two NHL cities before the age of 25. On paper, he's a great player and the eventual replacement for Kobotar, but I'm not even sure he's better than Velarde straight up. The Kings have been out-muscled two straight seasons in the playoffs by Edmonton, plus goaltending needs to be addressed more than Dubois, in my opinion. A Tom Wilson type of player up front or a Gudis type on the back end is a major necessity right now. Outside of Grunstrom, they are pretty soft up front. And on the back end, although guys like Anderson and Roy are physical when they have to be, um, but they are not intimidators. Coming up, more reaction. Oh, wait, that's that's <laughs> that's actually from me. Um, I would say uh, as far as Dubois playing himself out of two NHL cities, yes, that's a fact. 
Um, and we can only take his word for him for, for now that he's happy in Los Angeles because he got the contract he wanted. We'll see. We'll see if that keeps him happy for at least a while. I think the only thing I would uh, take issue with with that comment was that Velarde is straight up better than Pierre-Luc Dubois right now. That's not the case. It just, it just isn't. Um, his numbers in his best season don't match up with the numbers this past season for Pierre-Luc Dubois. Now, maybe he'll turn into that. But right now, the best player involved in that trade certainly was Pierre-Luc Dubois. But the Kings certainly gave up a lot of assets to get him in return. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Coming up, more reaction on the Pierre-Luc Dubois trade on this edition of Locked LA Kings, your team every day. For complete coverage of the NHL draft, check out Locked On L- uh, Locked On NHL. Uh, they'll also keep you up to date on the latest trades and signings, and they'll get you ready for free agency signing period, which is coming up next week. That is Locked On NHL on YouTube and your favorite podcast app. Uh, some more reaction from the Pierre Luc Dubois trade. This is from Robert Chow eight five zero seven. He says, "I don't hate the trade, but my only question is, did we have to throw in that second round pick?" If it were including Kupari, then the Jets should have been sending a second or third back to the Kings, especially since the Kings were a preferred trade partner. I know those picks don't usually hit, but you never know when you may stumble upon a Mikey Anderson. Losing Velarde is a tough pill to swallow. I always prefer homegrown talent, but I'm looking forward to seeing what PLD can bring to the team going forward. A lot of people seem to be uh, a little bit put off by that extra pick that was thrown in on the deal. Seems like if that hadn't been the case, a lot of people might have been able to swallow it a little bit more. Uh, this from Frank Pareda, 1106. He says, man, I don't know about this trade other than I firmly believe the Kings have lost their faith with both Byfield and Turcott. I know Velarde and I follow had to go because of the cap issues, but if Byfield had played anywhere near his expectations, this trade would not have even been considered all four of the players traded likely would have cost the Kings less and gotten more production. I would disagree that the Kings have lost their faith in Byfield and Turcotte. As a matter of fact, uh, I think they're going to have to put their faith more into those two players going forward. They're going to have to, uh, you know, Byfield's going to be in the lineup and he's going to need to produce this coming season more than he has. And I think with Turcotte, I think they're finally going to have to figure out whether he can play or not. And obviously they can't play him if he's not healthy. So if he's healthy, I wouldn't be surprised that they put him on the fourth line and say, you need to prove it. You know, we invested a first round pick in you. Uh, We need to know whether you're going to be able to play or not. Uh, This comes from beige JR. He says, let's first look at the payment hefty price for sure. But I agree with you. The front office had been playing it relatively safe prior to the Fiala acquisition. So to go on on PLD shows that this organization is serious about a cup run next season. Second, I agree with Ayafalo and Velarde. We've seen as much as we'll get from them and uh, their chances for a fresh start uh, are now elsewhere. Velarde had one season, so it wouldn't have been asinine to offer him a lucrative multi-year deal. He too gets a chance at a fresh start and hopefully continues to make strides. Lastly, We have a huge pool of prospects waiting to get ice time. Hopefully this will get the young guns more experience and more comfortable in the system. Big trade, but a necessary evil to make this team for real. Uh, This comes from Dr. Bob 502. Eddie, I rarely disagree with you, but this time I do. I don't give Blake credit for making a change that looks to make the Kings worse. PLD isn't worth 8.5 million for eight freaking years. Plus, Velarde is much better on D than Pierre-Luc Dubois. So is Ayafalo. Plus, Kupari and a second rounder. Way too much for PLD, who has never come close to a point per game. And Kings had excellent chemistry with Gabe, Ayafalo, and Kupari. PLD needs to score 35 goals and 80 points, plus play good D in order to change my mind. Pierre-Luc Dubois is not a superstar. Hate this trade so far. Well, if he needs to score 80 points to change your mind, that's probably not going to happen because that's uh, that's asking a bit much. He's not a superstar, but he is a very good player who's in his prime and should be very good for years to come. Um, yes, Velarde is a better defensive player and Ayafalo is a better defensive player, but Pierre-Luc Dubois is a better offensive player and he's better on the power play than Gabe Velarde. Um, so yes, the Kings did get 
uh, lesser on defense. They got more on offense, and they're also not as deep because of the numbers that they gave up. But uh, they felt like having a stronger presence down the middle was a priority. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, this comes from Jarrett Powers, 4627. Horrible trade. Might be worse than the Cal Peterson deal. Blake is not competent. Uh, take Velarde off the power play. His hands in tight were the difference in our improved power play. Wait two years till Kupari fills out and has the size and speed. I follow makes every line better. PLD has been unhappy everywhere he's been. It's also a message. Fiala, PLD, Dano. Blake is building from outside the organization a team of mercenaries. Uh, well, I would take exception to that word. Um, but I would say, first of all, saying Blake is not competent is a little over the top. Um, you talked about Velarde on the power play. Pierre-Luc Dubois has better power play numbers than, than Gabe Velarde. It's not saying that Gabe Velarde didn't do well on the power play for the Kings, but uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois has, uh, I think he had over twice as many goals on the power play than Velarde. Um, I don't know that Ayafalo made every line better. When he played last year on the top line with Kopitar and Kempe, he did not make that line better. So there's that. Although I like Alex Ayafalo, he's not a bad player. Um, but the mercenary things, I would take great exception to that. Um, every team is built through multiple ways. There's no team out there that's just homegrown. There's no team out there that's just all free agents. There's no team out there that's just guys that have been traded for. So you, it's a mix of everything. Look at the Stanley Cup winning teams for the Kings. Uh, you had the homegrown group of Kopitar, Dowdy, Quick, and Brown. But you brought in a lot of other guys from other teams. Were they all mercenaries? Uh, Justin Williams, Marion Gabrick, er, uh, uh, Jared Stoll, uh, Matt Green, Willie Mitchell. Uh, I mean, there were a lot of guys that were brought in from other, uh, uh, Jeff Carter, Mike Richards. These guys were all brought in from other places. So were those all mercenaries or were they just additions to make the team better? So uh, I think mercenaries is a bit much. I, I, look, I get that a lot of people get attached to those homegrown guys, guys that are drafted and developed in, in the organization. I get that. I totally do. Um, but I think, I think the mercenary thing is a little bit too much. Uh, this comes from Michael G 5818. And he says jets fan here. Uh, so he says, uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois can be frustrating. He'll score you an awesome goal one minute. And then the next shift, he'll take a stupid penalty, which leads to a power play goal. So you constantly ask, why can't he just dominate and stop being a stupid pest? The guy is in the 100th percentile in drawing penalties but the one percentile in taking them. So he basically starts shoving fights with lesser players for no reason. Uh, this takes him off the ice in key moments in games and disrupts any momentum that he generates for his team. He also has a tendency to shut it down whenever things get tough. He was invisible when the Jets were failing in the, falling in the standings this past year. Uh, he did the same thing in the playoffs against Vegas. If your coaching staff can fix these things, then you will probably have a great player in your lineup. But if not, then you'll see him pouting on the bench by game 20. So that was a Jets fan perspective. And that does lead me into what's coming up on next week's show. Uh, we are either going to try and have Kings director of amateur scouting, Mark Yannetti on to talk about the Kings five players that they just selected in the NHL draft. Give us kind of the uh, inside scoop on those guys. We put in a request. We'll see if the Kings oblige us on that. Uh, or we'll have an interview with somebody from the Winnipeg Jets, whether it's the Jets locked on host or somebody that covers the team on a daily basis to get their perspective on Pierre-Luc Dubois and this trade involving the LA Kings. So that is going to be our uh, one of our big features coming up on next week's show. So for you everydayers, those of you that watch and listen to Locked on Kings every day, that is definitely something coming up on next week's show. And we'll try and get some other special features to pass along to you as well. I think we will have a 4th of July show. Uh, I'm not positive. I think uh, I think I'll probably be able to put a show out and keep the thing going every day. But uh, regardless, um, appreciate you guys uh, listening and watching. Obviously, I appreciate all the feedback from this past week, whether it was emails or comments on the, uh, the YouTube episodes. Uh, we had a lot of great feedback this week. Thank you for everyone who took the time to make a comment. And uh, this show obviously is not possible without your participation. So thank you very much for that. If you want to send an email 
for our show next Friday. The email address, as always, is lockedoneddy at gmail.com, E-D-D-I-E, lockedoneddy at gmail.com. We'd love for you to stay connected with the show throughout the weekend. And when we're not on the air, uh, we are on Twitter and Instagram at Locked On LA Kings. I'm Eddie Garcia. Thank you, as always, for listening and watching this episode of Locked On LA Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Have a great weekend. We will talk to you on Monday. And as always, go Kings go.